All right, guys, what's going on? The other day, I was on Shop Carl's and noticed they had a couple of baits and stocks in some colors that have been kind of hard to get this year. So I ordered me some, got the box right here. Figured I might as well say this video is sponsored by Shop Carl's since I got the box in my hands right here. One thing that's really cool is if you have not got a membership yet for Carl's Club, you can go get a membership. You get early exclusive deals. You get to see the, the deals that come out first. You get early access to new baits. You get expedited shipping. And then now there's a new grand opening of the first ever Shop Carl's store and early access is granted a new member so the store opens on june the 18th and if you're a new member you actually get to go inside the store on june the 15th so that's pretty cool to be the first people in a store nothing will be sold out when you go in there that'd be pretty cool but anyways let's jump in here and see i know i got me some invaders in here i don't really remember what all else i ordered but i know there was some colors of invaders that i had been looking for that have been a little bit out of stock so let's go see should i just like stab into it go like straight crazy on it or is that just too much all right, might have got a little bit, a little bit open. I literally can't remember what all I got. But, yep, got some invaders and stuff. Hey, 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 Spro Frog. And then the invaders. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rig some of this stuff up. Oh, this was what I was looking for. These have been out of stock. This is one of my favorite swim jig trailers, and this is the lunch bug in whitey tidies and i haven't been able to get them from anybody like everybody's been sold out and they had some on the website so i was like hey i gotta get these and then while i was ordering i just obviously put everything else in the in the box in the uh, shopping cart already also so got some colors of some frogs and some nail weight stuff like that so just rig a couple of these up and go fishing i mean these are already the summertime baits you want you got a popping frog and then an invader to flip around like what else do you want for summertime fishing besides Pretty much I can fish with what's in this box. So pretty cool. About to rig some of this stuff up and get ready to go catch a dang frogfish. All right, Hunter, you usually ask the important questions. Mm -hmm. This time I'm gonna have to ask you the important questions. You like natural green or you like natural red? I like natural green. Natural green. Let's put him on then. He's one of my favorite colors when the bluegill are up there shallow too, to tell you the truth. It's a really good I color. I like that little bit of purple on this book. The fish can't see that. Oh, they can't? No, it's on top. Yeah, but it's still cute for the right. aesthetic. We'll tie him on. One thing that I like to do on the Spro Frogs is I do bend the hooks just a little bit. I know some people say never bend hooks, but I don't care what people say. I take it just like I've got it right here, and I actually bend it out a little bit. So what that does gives you a little bit of clearance going down the side of that frog just like that. So you're going to grab, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side because usually... A lot of times the frog doesn't just perfectly hook them in the roof of the mouth with both hooks like like it's designed to but with that little bit of clearance like that and i'll take them and bump them up just a little bit if i'm in super open water i'll bump them up just a little but i just like to offset them just like that so i've got a really good color one on right now a green pumpkin one but we'll take that off and put on natural green because happy wife happy life is what they say so we got it's a really good color though also, Hunter, you have to be thinking, on the Invader, we got some of those Marty Crawlins in there. Is that the color you're going to be flipping? That's, is that the color I like? That's the one that's got all the sparkles in it. That's got like the, it's like a watermelon seed, kind of translucent one that looks a little purple in the water with the purple sparkles. Yeah, I like that one. Let me flip him around too. Yeah. All right, we'll get the, we'll get the Marty Crawl Invader and put that on. And uh, we're just going to go frogging and flipping a little bit. Because, I mean, this is all I'm going to do anyways. Y'all watch my videos, y'all know about it in the first place there's this now let's grab the box i don't i didn't even that's it there you go i was out of these i was literally out of these also so grab us one looks blue gilly in my opinion that looks a little blue gilly so all right this one actually in the water looks a lot different than it does out of the water well, I just happen to have a rod right here that we just showed in my nighttime video. So let's just get them all in there, get them all set up. And that's it. Lock, cock, ready to rock. So y'all can tell by the frog I, I didn't pick, Hunter picked, which is a good choice 
and she picked this invader both of these are really good bluegill imitators as far as the colors go so you know they soft plastics come in all kinds of different colors you know you want to throw everything from black and blue to red to green pumpkin oranges bluegill colors this right here is a it's kind of like a watermelon candy it's called mardi crawl it's just got you know kind of a little bit of translucent stuff to it a little bit darker back or darker top than bottom lots of sparkles in it just looks a lot like a bluegill to be honest with you so we're just kind of in some of these pockets today where i think the bluegill are spawning the bass you know like i said have for the most part already spawned so a lot of these fish that are still staying up shallow that have not moved offshore they're going to be around a lot of the bait they're going to stay close to the bluegill wherever the bluegill are and they're going to a lot of times be relatively aggressive like surprisingly aggressive i don't catch them that good just kind of fishing around like this in april or even early may but it seems like late may going into june those times of years they just kind of get back where they're on the stuff where you want to catch them off of so picks a couple bluegill looking baits or it just resembles a bluegill the invader obviously it doesn't look super like a bluegill but it's a finesse a little bit narrow kind of just a little snack for them and put that in front of one they'll eat it the frog though I do believe that when they eat a frog, they think it's a bluegill or a shad most of the time. Whenever you throw it around a place where there's a lot of bluegill and a bluegill color, I think the bass believe they're really eating a bluegill. One thing that I did for flipping the invader, like I said in an earlier video, that seven foot six heavy 13 fish and envy rod is extremely powerful. I actually dropped down, this is a seven foot six medium heavy envy, still has a ton of power. And that's the one I've actually been flipping fluorocarbon and stuff on recently. And the invader is kind of a small piece of plastic. It's one of the reasons I really like it is because it's very easy to get that hook and penetrate those fish, you know, like that. So small piece of plastic, this rod's still really powerful, but I did drop down to that one for flipping wood and stuff. Oh, I lost it. My line, that was, my line was on a little branch and whenever I set the hook, it broke the branch and then my rod got way back over my head. A little invader, but you know, lost him because uh, it's like whenever you're flipping grass sometimes and you set the hook and you rip the grass, not good pretty standard though we got back here to where it really flattens up got away from some of those bluff rocks and this is one of those places where the bluegill could be spawned anywhere around here i don't see them haven't seen many bluegill in this pocket but definitely if there's going to be a bluegill bed it's going to be somewhere back in here around this around this wood and stuff so one thing i did recently that i don't know if people know it's an option i put my power poles on one tap so if i press these buttons up here normally typically you have to double tap them you have to you know stomp them twice now I just have to touch it one time. They go all the way up, all the way down. Been an option for a couple years now, but I just decided to do it. And it's a whole lot easier for me. There's bluegill on that bluegill bed right there. That's pretty, you know, there's bluegill bed out in front of that. And I lost that fish out of this tree, bluegill bed right there. So that's kind of what you're looking for whenever you're targeting bluegill beds is, you know, somewhere flat, close to a lot of cover. And even though I didn't catch him off the bluegill bed, he was on literally the next piece of cover right out in front of it. So not a bad sign. When I got up here, I could see the little holes with the bluegill standing in it or sitting in it. But I have uh, fished it pretty well now and I don't see any more bass. So. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to show you on this Hummingbird Helix 12 what a bluegill bed looks like. That's it right there. The middle is actually a stump and then surrounding that stump is some holes. And that's the actual bluegill beds. Now sometimes you will see something inside the holes and that's the actual bluegill. Look right there. You can see one right there. What? I think you're doing good. Did I tell you that was a stump or you just knew? Huh? I was just doing my own little thing. Yeah, no, that was good. So that's actually true. That's not a super defined, defined bluegill bed. That was actually... That's not a very good one, actually. But you kind of see what it is. You can see the stump. You see the holes around it. That was kind of scattered. Though. A lot of times they'll be more tightly packed and more defined, a little bit harder bottom. You can see them a whole lot better. But that was one. So we'll get up, 
fish around in here. We know there's bluegill in the area. There's probably gonna be bass in the area also. So we're gonna get up and fish around a little bit, you know, and just see if we can get a bite or two. Because these are the times, these are the places you have to fish. If you don't stay around aggressive fish, or the bite gets tough. So this is gonna vary just like the bass spawn. But in my area, bluegill typically spawn from about mid-April all the way until about mid-October. So I'll see literal bluegill beds that entire time and you know around the full moon people say it's better it does seem a little bit better but for the most part they're there all the time some of them are they're just not that massive wave like there is around the full moon and i'm still not super convinced on that but i have seen a little bit of correlation to that with the bass spawn i have not but anyways that's kind of what we're doing today is out looking you can sometimes see the bass swimming around kind of you know just kind of herding the fish or staying around there staying in the closest cover or just cruising around the banks around the bluegill bed so keeping our eyes open looking for the bass and hopefully we'll see one throw to it or just get a bite around here fishing around some of these lay down trees stuff like that that was so awesome i ain't even got him hooked I do got him hooked over the back. So do you see him eat it? Yeah. He didn't have it. He and, got tangled up in the line. And then, I don't know. I mean, that sunline braid's on your side, dude. That's all I got to tell you. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, little one. I did have a little bit of a hook in his side, but I foul hooked him. But uh, he ate it, and you could see the bait was outside of his mouth. And then he went under the water, and I thought I seen the bait go disappear. Like, I, I waited. I thought I seen the bait disappear into his mouth and it was probably just behind him because obviously it wasn't in his mouth too well or I would have hooked him somewhere closer to the mouth. But I had him hog tied. <laughs> piece of wood hooked him good you gotta be 12 inches to be a keeper on this little pond so that one was maybe what do you think hunter keeper or no we'll go what hunter says that was definitely a keeper He came up here and got it. Got both hooks in him. That's how you want to hook them. They ain't coming off. Can't see the other hook, but it's through there. Then we the old natural green. That might be the OG color, actually. This might be one of the, I know it's one of the first colors that ever came out. It might be the first color. All right, that's going to do it. Had a fun day today, though. Got uh, two or three frog bites and two or three flipping bites. I think we probably caught four fish, maybe five. I'm not 100% sure. Lost a couple, missed a couple, but that's how it goes sometimes. You know, we're, we didn't have any big bites today. We had actually no big bites at all. Actually, all small bites, but it's hot. This lake has been taking less than nine pounds. It's been taking six, seven, eight pounds to win some of the tournaments around here. So it's just not fishing real good right now. But still got to come in here and get us a frog bite or two on the natural green. Caught some flipping the 13 Invader. This video is sponsored by Shop Carl's. Like I said, they're having that grand opening June 18th. Members get to go in on June the 15th. They got all kind of stuff for the first people in line and stuff like that. So go check them out. And if you have not got a membership, go get you one because it'll get you early access to a lot of stuff and colors and expedited shipping. But we had fun. Me and Miss Hunter are out. <laughs>